Hello and welcome to my workshop. As promised today, I'm going to do an art camp tutorial. I'm going to bring a grayscale image. It's a special grayscale image though. It's not just ordinary one. It is an actual 3D grayscale image. There is a difference. So I'm going to bring that into ArtCam and clean it up in ArtCam because very rare can you just take a, an image uh, and put straight into a program and do the tool pass straight away uh, because there's, there's a lot of noise and uh, some distortion so you do have to clean them up. So I'm going to show you how to do all that and uh, we'll see how we go. So for this tutorial I'm going to video off this screen um, because it's much easier for me to um, teach you uh, what is going on or what I'm doing because I actually talk a lot with my hands <laughs> so um, and I find it easier to do that so got a nice big screen and uh, we should be able to um, get through this. There's a lot of information to um, to go into this video, so um, it's going to be very time-consuming, uh, as in for, for you to watch. Uh, so I'm probably going to break this up into two separate uh, videos. So the second video will be uh, machining this piece um, on the CNC router. Okay, so. Uh, this is my channel page by the way um, and to get to my second channel you can press on that bar there that'll take you to my second channel as well and uh, there's now over 300 videos so what we're going to do is go straight into Google now these grayscale images are readily available on Google um, in some of my videos, you've seen me do quite a few of these, actually I've done this one here, I've done this one here, uh, and quite a few others too. Um, and you'll see a difference. Now this is a 3D scanned image, okay? It's a 3D grayscale image. Now this one here um, and also this one down over here and that one there, this one here, they are straightforward grayscale images. They're not actually 3D images at all, they are scanned uh, or, or, or they are photographs then more than a scanned image um, and they they do not translate well to uh, a 3D image in ArtCam for you to machine so you must ensure that it is a, a, a genuine 3D grayscale scanned image which these are uh, the, and the way to tell it is they're slightly smoky. Now, I'm going to do this one here. Um, well, we'll pick this one here for a moment. And you'll see that it's a sort of a smoky image. That's because the levels of white and grey to black are blended. And the lighter a part is of the, the picture, it's going to be further in the forefront. And the darker the blend then is going to be deeper into the picture. So if you notice why it is smoky is because the blend is very subtle. So the programs associated with uh, CNC's machines in general can uh, make sense of the picture whereas this one 
it's just a, a grayscale image. It's not a scanned 3D. The smokiness is gone. Although it's a nice crisp in image, um, it's not really suitable for um, putting into our camera and making a deep 3D. You can actually make a 3D image of this, but it will be very, very... Um, but you will not be able to make it very deep. Uh, at cam will treat this as a photograph and uh, you know you, you might be able to make a lithothane out of it or you might be able to make a very very um, shallow okay um, 3d image of it. You, it it just doesn't have the clarity although we see clarity with our eyes uh, the program hasn't got the um, the clarity of information in the picture to actually make a good 3D rendition of it in real life. So, I hope you understand that. I think I <laughs> sort of presented that okay. Um, so, what we are going to do, um, I, I like this one here, and I'm going to show you how to take the imperfections out of it and how to um, treat this in ArtCam and set up the size, the depth, the tool paths. A lot of you are having trouble out there with um, feed and speeds in relation to the size of tool or even choosing the right size of tool. Of course this all depends on the type of material, your machine even, and um, well, well we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay. So Okay, so here's our 3D scanned image. And like I say, it looks smoky and you know, it looks a little bit scruffy to our eyes, but to uh, a three-dimensional program like ArtCam uh, or Aspire, um, and that's another thing too, we might in the future be moving uh, into um, Vetric Aspire as well. I uh, have had so many requests about that program and um, whether I can do tu tutorials and can you do in um, Aspire what you do in ArtCam and all these sort of things. Yes, you can. Uh, there are some different tools in it and uh, well, over the next coming months we'll, we'll get into that because uh, at the moment we're still talking. Okay, so we've uh, brought up our cam and you can simply, and you can do this in, in uh, both programs, you can do this in Aspire and you can also do this uh, in our cam as I'm going to show you and you just drag and drop it in. You can import it by using the import tools as well, but uh, it's, it's a very simple process. You just um, pick your grayscale image and drop it into our cam or Aspire. Now the first things you need to do is to work out what size you want the image. Now, obviously this is a personal preference, uh, you know, what size you want a particular job to be, um, but I, I'm going to do this uh, particular one in brass. Um, so I know that the brass is five millimeters thick and uh, deep in, in, in Z and um, you know I don't want a huge picture of it I just want a, a small well less than a postcard size really so we'll say about oh, about four inches by three inches something like that now when you choose the size of picture you need to sort of think about, well, how deep do you want the 3D carving of the object inside? Um, because you can actually distort it if you choose too deep, uh, too deep a 3D object over the size of the object, if you understand what I mean. But I'm going to show you in ArtCam, and there again, 
Everything I'm doing here in, in ArtCam, you can also do in Aspire. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it at 300 dpi. Not much point in changing that because that's, the, that's what the picture is. DPI, by the way, is dots per inch, or pixels per inch. Okay, so when you're doing things like this, you, you need to sort of learn how to work in, in, uh, in imperial inches and in uh, metric as well. Okay, so we're gonna make this 100 millimeters in length which is four inches thereabouts and so this is going to be just about three inches all right so it's automatically changed it um, I'm going to say I want this 2.5 now I can change this later on in our cam um, when I've got it in there. Uh, I can actually pull it up or drop it down. So this is just the initial Z height that I've chosen. So you know you're not stuck with it if you choose uh, a particular Z height that you and you know you're not happy with. So you can actually change it afterwards. So that's what we're going to do for now. And we're going to OK that. And we're going to make this a little bigger. OK. Bigger. And the next thing to do now, I suppose, uh, is to, to label it and, and save it. Because, uh, you know, you're gonna, you, we're going to be doing a lot of work on this and we don't want to lose it. So here we go. and it's saved. So that's the first process. I've just come across this 3D grayscale image um, and I think this one suits our purposes better than what the, the other one I chose so uh, I'm just going to uh, switch to this one um, because I can show you better on this one you know sort of the uh, how powerful ArtCam uh, and programs like that, like Aspire, are to um, sort of clean this picture up. So we'll get straight into it. So we're just going to take this grayscale image and put straight into ArtCam. And we're going to one millimeter. We'll make it a little bigger. I don't want to be. I don't want to go too much. In fact, I can probably. I'm going to go 100. That's four inches long. And we're going to say that we want this. millimeters in depth I think. Have a look see what that looks like. That looks to me like a, a better image. So um, and there's imperfections in this that you know I can we can clean up such as, you know, un unwanted writing and things like that. But uh, this is a very, very good high quality um, scanned 3D image. So we're going to do quite a bit of work on this to, to make it what we want. OK, so I've turned our sword around now because we actually want to uh, machine it in the X and it just makes things very much easier. Um, so there's a few things we're going to do with this. Now, if we look at it 
behind this screen um, there's another frame or picture uh, the art cam has already converted this to a 3D picture so I'll just show you um, what it actually comes in like in 3D form and uh, what we need to do to clean it up you can see it's um, you know it's very uh, very mucky in places and plus there's unwanted you know sort of writing on it as well so we're going to get rid of all that so the very first job that we're going to do is we're going to we're going to wipe the whole 3D image in other words try and get rid of some of the speckliness of it now to do that what we do we go into here smooth relief and it's you know it's exactly what it says it'll do so that's one application now I don't want to do it too much to lose you know the um, the clarity here I do it once more I think and that's it That's all I think I want to do. Um, now we need to get rid of rid of this unwanted writing. So I'm going to start this end here, and we'll zoom in. <clears throat> so what you simply do is really rub it out. Now in AtCam. Um, and Aspire. And over on this side in AppCam, behind my ear, <laughs> you'll see that there are tools here to manipulate a 3D image. Okay, so like a smooth, a, um, there's a smoothing tool, there's a, a deposit tool, uh, there's an eraser, and uh, what else have we got here? A smooth tool. Now we're going to use a smooth tool. So we'll pick that one and we get a, a fly out dialog box. Now that spot that you can see there, that's the area that is going to be affected when I press the, um, the left mouse key. And these slider bars here um, just alter the intensity and the size of that area, that spot area, I'll just I see I've made it really big there. Okay. It's going to be less effective and we're going to affect areas that we don't want to. I don't want to affect this at all. So that's probably big enough. Now the strength we can either go all the way up there, in other words push it all the way in, squash it all the way in uh, but that will, you know, sort of deform it to, um, to, um, you know, sort of you're going to end up cutting the trench. So um, I, I'm actually going to do a little trick that um, uh, that I don't really necessarily have to do this, but I want to show you how to do this anyway, uh, and that will become apparent to you very shortly. So we're going to sort of mid-range about 40% and then just go over it like so keep going over it and you can actually sort of get rid of it altogether maybe a little bit more you see it gradually disappearing All going, and you can tell it's disappearing because it, it fades to the background colour, which is what you want. You've got to be careful you don't, like I just did there, I just went onto that edge. That doesn't matter to us. So what we're really doing within a, in the program is we're just really erasing it or squashing it down or spreading it. To, uh, so it disappears.
just like that. And we're going to accept that so we can come out of that tool and as you can see we've sort of got rid of it uh, <coughs> but we, you know I'm going to further treat this um, because there's things I want to do and things I, I you know I don't want um, the outer edge of this um, so what I'm going to do, so I'm, I'm not even going to bother erasing that because it's not necessary for me to do. So what I'm going to do is going to go to the 2D screen here and I am going to choose create polyline. So I'm just going to draw a boundary line around this 3D relief. So now we've got our boundary line around there. You just press create and it's there to stay. So what we've done is, or what we, we are doing, we are going to eliminate everything outside of that line and we're just going to keep or concentrate or machine what's inside of that boundary layer or boundary line. So we're going to highlight that boundary line, like so. And we're going to go into the 3D. Now, although we can't see it, uh, that, that doesn't really matter. Um, the boundary line is just a shade uh, just off that line there, running around. We're going to lose this bit of border, that really doesn't matter to us. Uh, what we're really after is the sword itself. Uh, I mean, we could have made a boundary line on the inner edge of that. But, you know, I quite like to have some sort of border around it. And what we've left here, well, it really doesn't matter now. So what we're going to do is go to Toolpaths and we're going to say that we want a we want a 3D toolpath. Now we what I'm going to do with this I'm going to do this in at least two different cuts, possibly three. Um, so what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to do a roughing cut first. Now this is four inches long. So I want to scale out a lot of this material here. Uh, and we're going to do it in, in layers. Now I could do that with several different tools. Um, I could use a two flute three millimeter or eighth of an inch. See? Two flute and it's um it's a, a, a end mill, two flute end mill. And that, that's a that's a single flute. Single flute cutter. That one's four millimeters, a little bit too big. That's a single flute. Three millimeter. Um, and I could use a, I think that's four mil, that one. Yeah, it's, it's four mil. Now I could use a, that's another type of um, two flute end mil. 
that I could use. In fact, I'm prob I probably could use that one, but um, or I could use a four flute. Okay. Okay. So I've decided I'm going to use a, a two flute um, end mill to do a rough and cut to scale out most of this material. But now this is where we start selecting and choosing uh, how we're going to, or what part of this we're going to machine. So we're not going to do the whole relief. If we chose the whole relief, it would do the whole yellow section. So now we want selected vectors. And inside the selected vector, as indicated here, if we chose this one, it would go outside of that line that we've drawn. So don't forget, we've highlighted that um, boundary layer or boundary line or vector um, behind this screen. So that is what we're going to machine inside of that, as indicated here. And I'm going to do a finishing option at this moment. We're going to go straight for a, a roughing option. Okay, so our four millimeter just isn't there. So we're going to create a tool in the ArtCam tooling list. You can also do this uh, in Aspire and VCAF Pro. If it's not in the tooling list, I'm going to show you how to create a tool in the tooling list. So for the moment we're going to pick a six millimeter end mill. Then we're going to make a copy of it. There it is. I'm going to choose the lower one. And now we're going to edit. Okay. Uh, now this is the description. This is what appears in the tooling list. So we're going to just say four millimeter. And this really doesn't matter. It's metric. Uh, Diameter is four millimeter, and step down. Now, you know, I can alter this at any time when I pick the tool, but I'm going to say two millimeter. Um, these figures here really at this stage doesn't matter to us at this moment. So we're going to say OK. I'm going to go on that tool and we're going to choose it. So we've created a tool in the tooling list. It's as simple as that. Now then, we are going to set the parameters up. Here's a tool that we've chosen for our roughing. Now then, step over, which means each time the tool does a pass, it's going to progress into the material this amount or whatever amount we decide. Now 1.2 millimeters is a little bit too aggressive for brass. Fine if you're using you know wood or something like that um, but metals now a little bit aggressive when you're talking CNC routers. If it was a CNC milling machine it's a little stiffer and you can get away with it. But we're going to say 0.5, I think half a mil is fine. Step down the same. 0. Point, actually probably a little less than that. Probably 0. 0.3. Um, feed rate 20. Now we're going into brass here so we need to slow the rate up quite a bit um, so we're going to say and this is millimeters per second okay so that's like three quarters of an inch per second into brass I don't think so not with the CNC router so you know you have to have this in the back of your mind okay you know it's going to push that tool 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch through that material at this depth. Okay, so that has to be in your mind. 
uh, it's going to snap the tool. So, we're going to say, um, I think for this we're going to say 8, oh 10 millimeters, uh, let's go back here, 10, 10 millimeters a second. Now, I normally start up the program, as you've seen in past videos, um, at something like 10%, okay? So it's going to do, if I start the program up in, in Mark 3 at 10%, uh, that means it's going to go one millimeter a second, which is pretty damn slow, which is okay. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, and then we can ramp it up in Mac 3 and we can watch to see how the cut is going. <sighs> Plunge rate, 6 millimeter, probably 4. Now, plunge rate, you know, it's a little bit of trial and error, but we're going to do another little trick with this. We're not just going to rely on this and just go boom, straight down into the material. We're going to ramp it in, so we'll come up to that in a minute. Um, 15,000 RPM, that, that speed's okay. As in RPM, the RPM's okay. Um, it's a very, very small tool, and you want it spinning very fast to get the material out. Okay, raster. Um, normal conventional raster is fine, just back and forth in the X like this. Go on down, cut direction, both directions, so in other words it's going to cut this way and cut that way. It's, it's going to progress into the material uh, at the end of each stroke then. Uh, now if I went into this uh, and just went to climb milling only, that means it's, it's only going to progress into the material for one stroke. Now it's going to lift the tool out and come all the way back and then go in again. Step down 0.3 of a millimetre, that's fine. This is all okay. Okay, here we go. Now this is leading moves and we've, we've already got ramp added because I always ramp tools in. And you know, this type of program will learn how you prefer to machine things and it will pre-empt what you want to do. Okay, um, well I wasn't really happy with that so I'm going to, I'm going to now do a, try with a, a three millimeter. It just, it didn't go in tight enough for me. So, um, a finish up roughing option, here we go. Let's try, let's try two millimeter. Sorry, three millimeter. Two millimeter I think is a little bit too small. So we're gonna okay that. Step over point means so we got a point three. I'm gonna leave it as point three. No, point three five. Uh, step down zero point two five. No, zero point three. Be fine. These are okay. Material's okay, that's all okay. So we go. Cut. One. Point. Five, to distinguish it from the other one. Uh, so it sort of stands out to me. You can name this anything you want, so long as you know what it is. Calculate. That's a little better, I think. Looks okay to me. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks as though it's taken it a little bit more material. I'm happy with that. So we can switch that off at the moment. Okay. So now we're going to do a finishing cut. Now we're going to do a finishing cut with this one. Now this is a one and a half, one and a half millimeter ball cutter on the end of this. And it's a tapered ball cutter. Okay. One and a half or two. So again we go into the 3D machining option and we want selected vectors, so let's just make sure they're selected. Yep. So there again we've got to make a maker tool here, so choose a three and copy that. and ch ch choose that one, select it. No, we don't want to select it yet, so we want to edit it and change that to two. Two, and we'll put a capital T in there. Oh, small one. Just to distinguish that it's a taper. Um, change that to two. All these can stay there now, so we're going to OK that. Going to go in there, we're going to select that one. And now we can alter the parameters. Um, step over. Point two, no, we're gonna go point. That'll be okay if we were going into wood. It'd be a very, very nice finish. We're going into brass. So we're gonna go point one six. Just to give us a little bit of extra step down. We want to do this in one cut. So we're going to say 2.5 because we want to do it just in one cut. We don't want to do multiple passes. Feed rate 15, feed rate of 12, plunge rate of 6, Maybe, mm, yeah, six would be fine. Now this wants to be about uh, 18,000 RPM. 18 to 20,000 RPM, I can alter that. In, uh, you know, as I'm running the program. Just gotta see how it's cutting. And there again, we want ramp moves. Ramp moves, that's all turned on. Safe said, movement over the oh, th thickness of the material, movement over the material, and uh, maximum Z height, that's fine. Two millimeter ball mount. Okay, and calculate that. C of red. So let's uh, simulate that now. Simulate is all the way down here. Okay, and then we're going to do it fast. Boom. It looks a bit pexely on here, but in real life, you know, it's not going to look that at all. Because it's actually going to be about that actual size. Okay, so now what we have to do is to save the tool pass to a thumb drive and 
Then the next video will be putting oh dear, putting the this then into the CNC router and machining it. Okay. So to save it is a very simple process. Okay, to save, very simple process, just come down to here, press this. Now I'm going to save all three because uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure I may put the four millimeter through first. Um, I, you know, I haven't really decided yet, but I'm going to give myself that option or leave that, that option open to me. So I uh, want to put them all over onto this side first. I'm going to start off with a four millimeter. And we're going to say it's And let's just make sure it has saved. There they are there. Four mil, three mil, and the two millimeter. So that's that. So really, that's all the at cam process. So the next process is uh, on the CNC mill. Um, just one last little thing I'd like to show you. Uh, I've had several people comment on it about changing the material and the appearance of the 3D object here. Um, what you simply do is go to the little lamp up here and you can select, so at the moment it's on default setting, so we want to select, uh, I normally use actually gold. Um, nine carat polished gold. I'll strength up high like that. So there it is in, in gold. Okay, so that's how to change the different materials if, if you would like to. Okay, well thank you for joining me for this uh, video and the next video we will cut this in brass on the 6040 CNC router. So thank you for joining me for this uh, AdCamp tutorial and up and coming in the next couple of months uh, we will be branching into Aspire. So um, I think that'll please quite a few of you out there and uh, answer a lot of um, questions I suppose. Um, people you know have Aspire or VCAV Pro and they're, uh, they're asking uh, can I provide tutorials? Well we might be able to. <laughs> so thank you for joining me and um, Please like, subscribe, and uh, pop into my channel. There's oh, over 300 videos now with my both channels. Um, with Atcam, Mark III, um, CNC routing, CNC milling, lasers. Uh, I have a laser now, 100 watt laser. Uh, that's beginning to uh, be quite successful and uh, of course wood turning and I do promise that after the next video we'll, we'll have a course back in uh, on wood turning as well so thank you for joining me and it's bye for now